It's been raining here, well, like a lot, for the last three days, pretty much straight. But what if I told you that my plants are nowhere near watered enough? Actually, they're probably in desperate need of water because I wasn't watering while it was raining, partially because I didn't want to get soaking wet. And I'm dead serious here. Soil is a fickle creature when it comes to water. And you may think you've watered. You have pooling, pooling water. But in reality, the plants can't access it. So that's what we're going to look at here today. How to know when you've actually watered enough or correctly. If you don't know who I am, my name's Ashley. I'm a soil scientist, bachelor of science in soil science. I've been gardening since I was about five years old, and I've worked in the agriculture industry over a decade. And through this, I've learned in so many different shapes and sizes of gardens or fields how water works, because there's that's a whole genre of soil science because irrigation. So take or leave it when it comes to my recommendations. You won't hurt my feelings. I'm a redhead. I've been bullied within an inch of my life growing up. There's not much more you could do to me. Okay, let's get to probably the most obvious way to do this properly out of the way. And that is deep soil watering. You know what that means. It means really watering a lot so that the water doesn't just get that subsoil, subsurface soil. It gets th pushed through the profile. That's obvious. But did you know actually why we do that and why it's so important? Well, we want to force our roots downwards. And the reason why we want to force those roots downwards, particularly when they're growing right now from seed or from very recent transplants, is because we want them to escape potentially predatory issues. We want a bigger root ball in the event that we have something that goes in and eats those roots. And then we also want to force them down for nutrients that is lower in that soil profile that other plants haven't accessed yet. And also to help increase its chances of making it through a drought or a time when you aren't watering because you will have these plant roots that go down very, very deep into the only time that they won't go deep into the soil or that this actually will work against you is if you've got like a perched water table scenario, if you've got like a really heavy clay below then this will actually be to your detriment because then you will have a pool of water. So keep that in mind when you're going about doing this. 80% of cases, I would say, deep watering is necessary because quite literally, there's only like a handful of gardens I've ever seen with true, true clay in it. And if you did not know this, Geek Crew already knows this. You can just send me your soil photos and I'll kind of give you a little bit of an idea for free on Instagram, idea of what to do. And to be a part of the Geek Crew, you just hit that subscribe button. That's it. That's it. That's all. It's free. I'm a whore. There was a study published in the Plant and Soil Journal in 2004 that solidified the fact that deep root watering helps to make the plant more drought resistant and also increased nutrient uptake. Next up is hydrophobic soil trickery. So that is a mouse. There's a dead mouse there. Why is there a dead mouse? I was literally just here yesterday. A cat probably did that. Disgusting. Rest in peace. You are now compost from my garden. Thank you for your contribution. Anyways, this bed actually got me yesterday with this. I planted a bunch of beans in here and I thought to myself, why are the beans not up yet? That doesn't even make sense. It's been relatively warm. What's going on? So I dug down and I realized I became victim to hydrophobic soil. It's not so much the soil that was hydrophobic in this case. It was actually the peat moss that I used to top dress this soil with to help keep the moisture in, that was hydrophobic. I had this happen again, actually, this week. Not in my case, but I was doing a workshop with uh, Addictions Recovery Group, Oxford House. Shout out to you guys if you're watching. You probably are, because it's very recent in your mind when a redhead terrorized your backyard. In that, it was raining. It was right in the middle at the end of the three-day rain. And when I went down into the soil to actually plant the seeds, it was dry, bone dry. And that is because, again, hydrophobic compost in this case. Okay, so the way that this will present itself in the soil is obviously when you go to remove the soil after just watering and it's dry, that's a sign of hydrophobic soil. If you're noticing that there's a lot of pooling water and then that pooling water and or that pooling water begins to actually like run off really easily, that's another sign of hydrophobic soil. So once you see that, it is time to do two things. You want to use something called a slow soak. This slow soak can be quite simply just a soaker hose, for example, or your sprinklers on a lower setting. Whatever will allow you to apply water that doesn't pool too quickly and doesn't run off too quickly, causing kind of that topsoil erosion that we sometimes see. What we want is a nice slow trickle that doesn't allow for pooling, 
but allows for water to accumulate in those lower profiles. And you need to run it for potentially, depending on the situation, an hour or two, literally. And that's particularly true if we're talking dried out compost or dried out peat. Those are the two most common scenarios I see this in. Now, if you're like, absolutely not, Ashley, I do not have the time or patience for that. I'm with you on that. And so what you can get is actually wedding agents, remind me, because I'll forget, to put them in the comments down below, a link to them. But essentially what a wetting agent is, is it's totally organic. You can even get like yucca plant extract. And that wetting agent allows for permeability of the water without having to do that kind of slow trickle. And it's very simple to apply. Okay, so the next one is actually called the screwdriver trick. Now, it doesn't have to be a screwdriver. It can be anything screwdriver-ish. It could be a butter knife. It could be a twig, a metal bar, doesn't really matter what it is. It has to be small, similar to a, a screwdriver, and then also tough. So some sort of metal, typically over wood. What you want to do is you want to put said metal thingy onto your soil, and then you're going to probe it. If it probes easily, see how I just push that in with just a single finger? Oh, I can't see a cat there. So that is dry there. These edges are clearly very moist. They like probing. I've turned it on enough. Oh, see, then that's right. Okay, anyways, what you want to do is you just want to put it in the soil and see how easily it goes down. If it goes down and then suddenly stops, that is a sign that you've now hit either a compaction layer, which is probably not likely. It would have to be incredibly compacted for a screwdriver or a knife or this thing not to get through it. But you've either hit a compacted layer or it has officially not been watered that deep. And you can tell this because like here, I'm right on the surface and I can't get through. So, and this is dry here. It's bone dry. I'm also doing a weed flush on this. So ignore all the weeds. If you don't know what weed flushing is, watch my video on it because it helps you not weed as much. The other way to actually use the screwdriver trick as well is when you go to pull it out, if it feels like it's really kind of caged in and it's difficult to remove, that's another sign that the soil is too dry rather than wet because if it was wet, it would just slide out very easily. As does most probing scenarios. I think the next one is just intuitive. You saw this happen as a kid a million times. Are the worms near the surface? If they are, that's a sign you've watered deep enough. So if you're starting to see worms coming out, crawling across the cement, or there's on the surface of the soil wiggling around, that's a sign that you've gotten to the depth you need to go to, and so you can cut the water. The next one is actually to do a soil color test. And this one particularly works for people who are using like a mineral, actual in-ground soil. What you want to do is dig a slight hole or just even go in with a shovel and kind of wiggle the shovel back and forth to make a space. And what you're looking for is changes in color in that soil profile. So if your top layer is a darker color, that's watered. But if you start seeing like a gray or a light brown or something different color wise, lower than that, that's a sign that the water has not reached there. And you want to get the water to around the seven to eight inch mark, because that is where a majority of your roots will be sitting as a gardener. So here's the thing. If you've got containers, some of this stuff isn't going to work. You could try to probe it and it's going to slide down just fine, regardless if it's dry or not. Pooling water is probably your only real signifier of an issue. That can also be deceiving because it can just run down the sides, particularly if it's highly dehydrated, because now you have like kind of the soil separating from the sides. So when it comes to containers, probably hands down one of the best ways to do this is the lift test. So lift from the hips. What do you do? I don't even know. Just don't don't use your back. No. Are you supposed to use your back? I should know this considering I manage humans. I don't know. Just don't hurt yourselves. What you want to do is you want to rock it if you want. These are both soaking wet because I did water everything last night. If I was able to move this very easily, that is a sign that it is not fully watered. If she's heavy, she's a thick girl, it's watered properly and you're probably good to go. If it's not, you can use that wetting agent again with this, or you can very simply just do that slow water that we discussed. It'll work just fine. If you had issues watering in the past, Geek Crew, please comment it down below. Let me know what scenario it was specifically in. Was it potting soil? Was it compost? Was it soil soil? I'd be interested to know what the conditions were that caused it, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!